Can a hen have chicks with two or more different fathers in the same incubation? When we think about how a chick is born, the most common image is that of an egg being incubated. But what happens before that egg is even fully formed? Fertilization in hens is an internal event, a small miracle that occurs inside her body. When the rooster and the hen mate, he deposits his sperm into her cloaca. Imagine a small back door that the digestive, urinary, and reproductive systems share at the same time. Once inside, these tiny swimmers embark on an amazing journey through the oviduct, a long and winding tube that connects the ovary to the cloaca. Their final destination is the infundibulum, a section right next to the ovary. It is here, at this meeting point, where the magic can happen, the fertilization of the ovum or egg. It is crucial to understand that, although many sperm undertake this journey, only one, a single lucky sperm, will manage to penetrate the membrane of the ovum and fuse its genetic material with that of the hen. Once this union occurs, the zygote is formed, the first cell of what will eventually become a chick. Now even if an ovum is not fertilized, the hen will continue its process of egg formation. The ovum will travel through the oviduct, where the different layers will be added, the albumin or egg white, the internal and external membranes, and finally, the protective shell in the uterus. That's why the hen can continue laying eggs, even if there hasn't been a rooster present. However, if there are no roosters, these eggs will not contain an embryo, and, therefore, no chicks will hatch. In modern poultry farming, especially on large farms, incubation is often done artificially in controlled incubators. These machines replicate the conditions that a broody hen would provide, maintaining the optimal temperature and humidity for the development of the embryo. The time it takes for a chick to hatch varies depending on the species, but for chickens it is usually about 21 days. A hen's reproductive system is a marvel of biology, specifically designed for egg production. The ovary, often described as a cluster of small grapes, is where thousands of microscopic ova reside. However, in each reproductive cycle, only a few of these ova will begin to mature. The ovary sequentially releases these mature ova one at a time into the oviduct and that's how we get eggs from our hens at home. The oviduct is a muscular tube about 24 to 28 inches long, approximately 60 to 70 centimeters, a true processing tunnel where the fertilized or unfertilized ovum is transformed into the egg we know. This tube is divided into five main sections, each with a specific function, which are as follows. Infundibulum. It is the mouth of the oviduct, a kind of funnel that captures the ovum released by the ovary. It is here that, if sperm are present, fertilization occurs. The ovum remains in this section for about 15 to 30 minutes. Magnum. This is the longest section of the oviduct where most of the albumin or egg white, that gelatinous substance surrounding the yolk, is secreted. The ovum takes approximately three hours to pass through the magnum. Isthmus. Here, the shell membranes, those two thin layers found just beneath the hard shell, are added. The egg remains in the isthmus for about 1 hour and 15 minutes. Uterus or shell gland. In this shell factory, the egg spends most of its time about 20 hours. Here, the calcium carbonate shell that gives it its hardness and protection is deposited. A small amount of albumin is also added. Vagina of the hen. It is the last stop before laying. The vagina of hens is a short tube that connects the uterus to the cloaca. Just before the egg is laid, a thin protective layer called the cuticle forms on the shell, which helps prevent microorganisms from entering through the pores of the egg. <laughs> Finally, the egg is expelled through the cloaca, that common cavity that serves as the exit point for the digestive, urinary, and reproductive systems. The rooster's reproductive system is internal and designed to produce and transfer sperm efficiently. Unlike mammals, roosters have two testicles located inside their abdominal cavity, near the kidneys. These testicles serve a dual function. They produce sperm, the male sex cells, and also testosterone, the hormone responsible for the rooster's masculine characteristics, such as his comb, spurs, and courtship behavior. From the testicles, the sperm travel through the vas deferens, thin tubes that transport them to the cloacal papilla. The cloacal papilla is a small protrusion inside the rooster's cloaca and functions as his copulatory organ. Unlike many other animals, roosters do not have a well-developed external penis. During mating, which is a quick and often somewhat abrupt process from our human perspective, the rooster mounts the hen, and both animals bring their cloacas together in a brief contact. At this moment, the rooster releases his semen, which contains a large number of sperm, directly into the hen's cloaca. It is astonishing to think that rooster semen can take about 15 days to fully form, and it contains many more sperm per volume than human semen. 
What happens if we have our hens together with more than two roosters? This is where the story gets interesting, when more than one rooster is involved. Sperm competition is a phenomenon that occurs when a female mates with multiple males in a relatively short period. In this scenario, the sperm from different males are inside the female's reproductive tract and compete to be the first to reach and fertilize the ova as they are released. Imagine a microscopic race inside the oviduct. The sperm from different runners, the different roosters, are trying to reach the finish line, the ovum, before the others. Several factors can influence who wins this race. The amount of sperm a male deposits can be important. The higher the number, the greater the probability that some will arrive first. Motility, or the ability of the sperm to move quickly and efficiently, is also crucial. Even the length of the sperm could play a role in their ability to navigate the female reproductive tract. But the competition doesn't end there. Females are not passive recipients in this process. There is the fascinating concept of cryptic female choice, which suggests that females may have physiological mechanisms to influence which sperm are more likely to fertilize their ova. This could involve the ability to store sperm from certain males longer, or even to favor the transport of sperm from one male over another. Scientists are still investigating the precise details of how this cryptic choice works in birds. One of the most remarkable adaptations of the hen's reproductive system is its ability to store viable sperm for a prolonged period. Inside the oviduct, in specialized structures called sperm storage tubules, mainly located at the uterovaginal junction and in the infundibulum, sperm can survive for several days, and even weeks in some cases. Imagine these tubules as small storage capsules, where sperm can remain in a state of suspended animation, ready to fertilize the ova as the hen releases them. This incredible mechanism allows a hen that has mated with a rooster to continue laying fertile eggs for a considerable time after the last mating. This ability to store sperm is why, if a hen mates with several roosters in a short period, the eggs she lays in the following days and weeks could be fertilized by the sperm of any of those roosters. However, it is fundamental to remember that each individual ovum will only be fertilized by a single sperm at the time of fertilization. When a hen mates with multiple roosters in sequence, the question arises as to whether the order in which these matings occur influences the probability that the sperm of a particular male will fertilize the ova. There is the idea of last male precedence, which suggests that the last male to mate with a female has a higher probability of fertilizing subsequent ova. While this phenomenon has been observed in several animal species, including some birds, it is not an absolute rule, and the exact mechanisms may vary. In hens, the dynamics of sperm competition and sperm storage are complex. The sperm from the first male to mate might become established in the storage tubules, while the sperm from the last male might have a temporary advantage by being closer to the site of fertilization. However, factors such as the quantity and quality of sperm from each male, the time elapsed between matings, and the hen's possible ability to influence the use of stored sperm, cryptic female choice, also play an important role. Therefore, although the last male often has a higher probability of success, it is not always the case, and chicks in the same clutch could have different fathers if the hen mated with several roosters in the period leading up to laying. But returning to our initial question, it is crucial to reiterate that each individual chick will have only one father. Although a hen may mate with several roosters and the sperm from different males may be present in a reproductive tract, the fertilization of each ovum is a singular event involving the fusion of the genetic material of a single sperm with that of the ovum. However, the genetic implications of sequential mating with multiple males are fascinating. If a hen mates with two different roosters and then lays a series of eggs, it is possible that some of those eggs will be fertilized by the sperm of the first rooster and others by the sperm of the second rooster. Even within the same clutch, if the sperm from both males remain viable, there could be chicks with different fathers, all siblings of the same mother. This significantly increases the genetic diversity of the hen's offspring. Each chick will inherit a unique combination of genes from its father and its mother, which can be beneficial for the survival and adaptation of the offspring in a changing environment. From an evolutionary perspective, the behavior of mating with multiple males in hens and other birds may seem surprising, but it offers several potential benefits, such as increased genetic diversity. As I mentioned before, by mating with different males, the hen ensures that her offspring have a greater variety of genes. This can increase the probability that some of her chicks will possess genetic combinations that allow them to survive and thrive in different environmental conditions or in the face of diseases. Fertility insurance. If a hen mates with several males, it increases the probability that at least one of them will be fertile and able to fertilize her ova. 
This is especially important if some males in the environment are very young, old, or have fertility problems, obtaining resources or protection. In some bird species, mating with multiple males can lead to obtaining resources such as food or protection from predators by those males. While this is not as direct in domestic chickens in a controlled environment, in wild populations of chickens, it could be an important factor. Sperm competition and sperm storage in birds are topics of intense scientific research. Numerous studies have used various techniques, from observing mating behaviors to genetic analysis of chicks, to better understand these processes. For example, controlled experiments have been conducted where hens are mated sequentially with different roosters, and then the DNA of the chicks is analyzed to determine paternity. These studies have provided evidence for the phenomenon of last male precedence in some situations, but they have also revealed the complexity of the interaction between sperm competition and sperm storage. Other research has focused on the characteristics of sperm that may confer a competitive advantage, such as speed, viability, and morphology. The role of cryptic female choice is also being actively explored, investigating whether hens have physiological or behavioral mechanisms to influence which sperm they use to fertilize their ova. These studies are crucial for understanding the evolution of mating systems in birds and have important practical implications for poultry farming. Detailed knowledge of reproduction in our hens and sperm competition has significant practical applications for the genetic future of our chicken coops and the quality of the offspring. It is necessary that we always apply selective breeding in our hens, where we seek to improve certain characteristics of the chicks, such as egg production, growth, or disease resistance. And it is essential to be able to control ancestry through a rigorous selection of competitive chicken breeds in terms of egg or meat production. To ensure that chicks inherit the genes of specific parents, techniques such as small batch mating, where a rooster of a specific breed is kept with a small group of hens, or artificial insemination, which we will see in the next video, are used. Artificial insemination involves collecting semen from the desired rooster and artificially introducing it into the hen's reproductive tract. This technique completely eliminates sperm competition and guarantees the paternity of the chicks. In addition, understanding the factors that influence fertility, such as the nutrition and health of the breeders, the appropriate ratio of males and females in a natural mating group, and stress management, is essential for optimizing the production of fertile eggs on poultry farms. Although nature reveals to us the fascinating complexity of avian reproduction and the hen's strategy to maximize the genetic diversity of her offspring through sperm storage and competition between roosters, the answer to our initial question is clear. In the same incubation, each chick will have only one biological father. Each fertilized egg is the result of the union of a single sperm with the ovum. However, the possibility that different eggs within the same clutch are fertilized by different roosters underscores the astonishing ability of the hen to influence the genetic makeup of her future offspring. This video not only satisfies our genetic curiosity, but also provides us with valuable tools for the management and genetic improvement of our birds, opening a world of possibilities for the future of poultry farming in each of our countries. For your success, fellow breeder, until next time.